Hello, in this video I'm going to start the Cubethon project. This is a simple game which looks a lot like this. You're a cube and you fly down this course and you've got other cubes that you have to dodge and try to make it to the end. And the game ends if you fall off the sides or hit one of the other cubes or if you reach the, uh, the kind of the finish line at the end of the level. So uh, let's let's just uh, start and I'm going to go through the, I'm going to follow along with the written instructions here. So. Um, hopefully that will guarantee that they work. I've created a new Unity 3D project here. And um, but one of the first things you should do is start creating folders to help you organize the stuff that you're going to have in your project. As projects get bigger and more complicated, the number of assets in those projects can become overwhelming. So let's um, create some folders just to keep stuff organized. So I'm just going to right-click on a blank area and say create a folder. I'm going to create a folder called scripts. This is where I will put my scripts. And let me create a folder called materials. Create a folder called materials. This is where I'm going to put some materials that we'll need. There you go. That'll just kind of help keep things organized. Now um, let me just go make those materials because I know I'm going to need them later. Uh, I'm going to double-click and go into my materials folder. And if I right-click on a blank area, I get some options here for creating new assets. And material should be somewhere in there. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's create a material. And I'll call this one blue. And if I go up here to the color picker, you know, I can just kind of pick a blue color. Uh, and those hex values may be useful at some point if you're trying to precisely match colors. But um, there you go, there, there's, there's a blue, right? Okay, and now let's make another one. Create material. And let's call that, you know, let's make a red material. And, uh, ah, why can't I rename it? Red. That's not very red, is it? Uh, let's go open that guy up again and see, see the, I don't know why he's not super red. He really ought to be a lot more red, red than he is. Um, not sure if it's the saturation. Why are the sliders not working? Uh, that's pretty red. There we go. All right. And, or maybe it's, I don't know. I'm colorblind anyway. Uh, all right. So let's create another material here. And I'll call this guy white. You know, or maybe we want yellow or gray or something. I can just leave him there. I'll make another one. You know, uh, gray. And let's go to the color picker here. If I kind of slide these down. You know, so, something like that. Something that's not quite white. You know, you can if you have exact hex color codes, you could put them in here too. That'd be fine. All right, so something that's almost white, but not not really. All right, so there we go. Now we've got some materials. Now let's start making some of the geometry in our in our game here. Let's make um, the the floor that the or the that the player is going to run along down. So that's just going to be a game object. We'll just create a cube for that. We'll start off by starting off with a cube and then transforming it so it turns into something that's really long and skinny. And what, what we're going to be doing here is racing down the Z axis, which is actually the blue axis. So uh, the player is going to be kind of racing down in that direction, in the direction of the blue arrow. So let's uh, set the scale of this thing. Let's make it eight units wide. So it's kind of, you know, it's not super wide, makes it challenging for the player to stay on. And it doesn't need to be one unit tall. So let's make uh, let's make it like 0.1. There we go. So we'll make it 0.1 units tall, and then we want to make it really, really long. So the player has because the longer it is, the more of a play field we have. You, know, you can make it 500. You can make it a thousand. You know, if you make it a thousand, then you're gonna have a wow. All right, so we have to put a lot more stuff on there. A thousand looks pretty long. Let's like make it 500. There you go. And you can see now that. That's, that's a pretty long play field right there. And um, what I may do is just kind of move the whole thing. So um, you know, some, something like that. So, so zero, zero, zero is kind of right about there. Um, but anyway, so there's my play field. Uh, and you know what I could do is I could drag my gray color and throw it on there. Now that's now my my track is great. That's all you have to do to put a material on something is just kind of drag it onto there. Okay, so I think we're good there. 
Now let's um, let's just add a cube for the player. That's go oh, you know what I need to do though? Let's let's like give this thing a real name here. I'm gonna call this thing floor. And uh, let's set the tag on it. So everything you know should have a tag on it. A tag is just a name tag that allows you to identify that that object. So let me um, make a tag here. I'm gonna add a tag and uh, I'll click on a little plus sign. I'll make a new tag called floor. And now when I go back to that object, I should see floor in the list of tags that I can I can select on that object. All right, so I think I think we're good there. Now let's add a a cube that's that's going to represent the player here. So let me put in another game object. This will be a cube. There we go. And let's see. Let's put him at zero 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 and see where he ends up. Zero zero zero. And um, so that's pretty close. So we had our we had our terrain pretty much lined up at zero zero zero. And uh, let's raise this guy out of the um, the floor here. If you double click on anything in the hierarchy panel, um, yeah, Unity will kind of zoom in on it. I'm, I'm zooming in and out here with the mouse wheel. Uh, so this guy is kind of on the floor. He's sort of below the floor. Let's kind of lift him up a little bit. Ah. And then let's, sorry, I'm just not doing such a good job of navigating my scene here. We, oh, I'm gonna throw up. Okay, uh, let's put this guy there and lower it just a little bit. So it's kind of, you know, just above the terrain there. Maybe even a little bit lower. Actually, if we put the thing at 0.5, it'll sit right on top of the terrain. 0.5, boom. Okay, now he's perfectly on top of the terrain. And let's put a color on that guy, or a material. So let's go to our materials folder. We'll drag red on that guy. So now our cube is red. A lot easier to pick out. Cool, all right. So let's add um, some tag. Let's add a tag onto the player here. Player is a built-in tag. So now we've got our... Um, no, I tagged the wrong thing. That's, uh, there's our there's our player cube. We want to tag that. Now it's tagged player. And what else do we need on this thing? Well, we've got a box collider. Um, let's name the thing player. There we go. So we've got a player object that's tagged player, and we've got the red material on it. Now we want this thing to kind of behave like it's got physics on it, like it's part of the physics system. Like it'll kind of lean left and right, and it'll it's affected by gravity. It'll fall off the edge of the um, the board, or if it hits something, it'll start to, to tumble or, or spin. So to make something part of the physics system in Unity, you have to add a component to it called a rigid body. So if I uh, open up the, or I click on the Add Component button, you see I get a little search window here. I can type in rigid body. And there I go. Now I have a rigid body component on that thing. So it'll behave as though it's part of the physics system. And you can see use gravity is already checked. Uh, now there's some options down here that we kind of want to expand on. Uh, we don't want this thing to, uh, to, to be able to rotate around its x-axis. So the x-axis is um, the red arrow here. So we don't want it to be able to rotate around the, re the red axis, axis. So let's just say we he can't do that. So what we're saying is, sorry, your x-axis is locked. So he can kind of move left and right. He could, uh, you know, move forward and backward, but he's not hes not allowed to rotate around that particular axis. That'll just kind of help stabilize him. All right, and then let's, um, let's, put, let's move this guy down just a little bit, and then let's get our camera positioned so that it's looking down at the player. So if I, if I click on the camera here, you'll see I get a little preview of what the camera looks like. And I'm going to drag the camera down the z-axis so it's kind of right behind the player. And I can kind of lift it up. And then let's click on the Rotate tool. So up here we have Move, Rotate, Scale, just like in 3DS. And I can click on that axis and kind of rotate it down. So the, so the camera is looking down at the player. So the camera is actually going to track the player. We're going to put a script on, on, the, on the camera to make it kind of uh, keep a uh, constant distance from from the player. Okay, so let's see if we can kind of get the player controllable now. And to make the player have some logic, we're going to have to put a script on the player. So let's go into our scripts folder and create a new script. I'm going to create a new C sharp script and I'm going to call it player. There we go. And I'll double click on it. And it should open up in Mono Develop, but it is possible to set Visual Studio as the editor. And 
to be honest, Visual Studio is a much nicer editor than Mono Develop. Uh, it's just that Mono Develop will work on Mac and Linux. Visual Studio will not. So Mono Develop is the compiler or development environment that Unity ships ships with. Even though it is there, are certain like Visual Studio is certainly a better option. So let's take a look at what we've got here in the script. This is a C, a C sharp script. Uh, it is called Player. The name of the the class here has to match the name of the file. If they're not the same, that is an error. And we are inheriting another uh, class called Mono Behavior. This is um, this is actually a class that inherits component. So a script, our player class here, which is a, is a, which is a script, is actually inheriting mono behavior, which inherits component. So scripts are components. And um, just like when we did the, the Dodger activity, the big baddies and small baddies, and uh, they were all baddies, right? Like cats and dogs and fish, you know, not fish, cats and dogs and squirrels, they're all mammals, right? So there's lots of different types of components. And any script that you write, is a component because it, um, it inherits mono behavior, which itself inherits the component class. All right, so there we go. Uh, we're going to need uh, to add, import another library up here. So let's uh, add another using statement. And what I'm going to import is uh, Unity Engine dot scene management. And this library uh, defines uh, some functions for us, which are going to be useful for reloading the the scene. Um, when when the when you know, we've detected that the players crashed, we're going to have to reload the level. The functions for doing that are in this scene management class. All right, and then let's add some variables into our class here. I'm going to give uh, myself some room, and uh, we're going to want some sort of force that represents like how fast we're pushing on the player. Or the, the player cube is being pushed forward through the level. Um, I'll make it public so we can change it. If I make it public, we'll actually see it in the inspector. Um, and it'll be a floating point number, a public float. So float is just a number with a decimal point, and I'll call the, the number force, and I'll set it equal to 750, just a, t a totally random number I came up with by experimenting. Um, that should work fine. What other variables are we gonna need? Um, let's, let's add a variable to track whether the player is actually alive or not. This will be a Boolean variable, so a bool, yeah, it'll be true, false, and we'll call it alive. I don't know, capital A, I don't know, let's use lowercase a, I don't know. Uh, I guess I should pick a standard and stick with it. Um, true, here we go. So when we start off the game, we're alive. If we hit something, we'll set alive to false. And then the player won't be able to control, um, uh, you know, the keyboard won't work anymore. So now let's add, uh, let's go down here and work on our update function. So the update function is called once per uh, frame of the game, so approximately 60 times per second. And what we're going to do is, uh, if we're we're going to first check to see if we're allowed to move. That's going to be our alive variable. If so, if we're alive, then what we're going to do is figure out if the player's uh, hitting the left or right arrows, and then use that um, value to uh, apply a force to the player. And we're also going to push the player forward. So this is where the update function here is where, where we're going to apply movement to the player. So the first thing we're going to do is check to see if the player is alive. So if the player is alive, right, if our player, if our alive variable is true, now what do we want to do? Let's uh, put a comment here, move left or right. And now what we want to do is figure out um, what how, whether we're moving left or right. And we can what we can do is ask Unity for um, something called an input axis. It'll tell us like how, how fast should we be moving left or right. It'll actually return us a number. And then we can just multiply that times um, some other numbers to kind of come up with a, a, an indicator of how much we should move left or right. So uh, I'm gonna make a floating point number here called H speed. So that's for my horizontal speed. And I'm gonna ask Unity uh, how much of, what, what direction am I moving in on the horizontal axis? And with the horizontal axis, what we're really talking about is the left and right buttons on the game controller. And we'll say, what we're doing here at horizontal, we're saying, okay, hey, Unity, tell me how much, how far left or right am I moving uh, based on the control inputs that I'm receiving. And then I'm gonna multiply this times some random numbers here. Uh, not random, they, sorry, not, uh, some other numbers to, um, 
put some um, to, to, to smooth them out. So there's a, a number that is, is built into Unity called time.delta time. This is a smoothing value. So the frames don't all run at the same speed. One frame could take really long to run, then another frame could, could run very quickly. And this is really the time that the last frame took to run. So if the last time frame took a, a long time to run um, or a short time to run, if you multiply time.delta time, .delta time uh, times your speed, it, it kind of smooths things out. So that's, that's all you really need to know. And then I'm going to multiply this times 10. And I just, by experimentation, I found that 10 kind of worked. But you could change it to 8 or 9 and, or 11 and see, see what that does for you. Okay, so that's, we're, we're basically figuring out how, how hard left or right is the player moving, and then multiply it times some numbers to smooth it out, and then multiply it some numbers to scale it up. And this is kind of how, how much force we should apply to the player left or right. And now what we're going to do is move the player left or right by that amount. So to do that, we want to translate our objects left and right. Now if you go to the inspector here, you'll see that every object has a transform. So the transform object is what is actually responsible for the position of the object. So translation is, is actually a function that's built into the transform of an object. And you can see, so we've got a position right here. Transforming just means applying some, adding some numbers to our position. So let's say transform dot translate. And then, um, well, and then we've got three numbers here, x, y, and z. So our x axis is our horizontal speed variable. Our, we're not going up or down at all, and we're not going forward or backward at all. Right, so h speed, 0, 0, 0. So that's going to move us left or right. Okay, and now let's move forward. So forward is, what we're going to do is push this object forward. We're going to apply a force to the rigid body component on this object. And to get our rigid body component, we can use the get component function. Get component. And then in square brackets, we have to, or sorry, angle brackets, we have to specify the type of component that we want to retrieve. So we want to retrieve the rigid body off of this, com uh, off of this object. And the rigid body is responsible for the physics stuff. And in there, there's a function called add force. And now I have to say, OK, um, make a new, um, we have to tell it like what direction to apply the force in. And in, since we are now in a 3D game and we have three axes, right, we have to specify an x, y, uh, and z. So let's make a new vector 3. So the, a vector is just a, a direction in 3D space. Uh, and we don't want to go left or right. We don't want to go up and down. We want to go forward, backward. So I'm going to put 1 there. New vector 3, 0, 0, 1. And now what I'm going to do is multiply that times our force variable that we declared up top. And we just said arbitrarily that was 750. And then I'm going to multiply it times that time dot delta time thing to smooth it out. And uh, that's it, right? So. Um, what I'm saying here is, if I'm alive, read the controller, figure out how, you know, is the guy pushing the left button or the right button or whatever, multiply it times the, that magic number to smooth it out, and then multiply it uh, by some other number so, you know, it's, the, it, the player feels responsive enough, and then actually apply that number to the player's position. So move the player left or right by that amount. Uh, and then to move the player forward, we get the rigid body component off the player, and now we call its add force function, and that requires a vector. So what we're doing is uh, saying, or a vector is just a direction, right? So, um, you know, forward, well, how much forward? Well, mul multiply it by the force times that smoothing value. So, uh, so that should move the player forward. And now if I actually run this, it should work. Let's try it. So if I go back to my game here and I take the player script and just drag it on to, uh, why did that not work? Drag it on to the player. So when I did that, you can see now the player script shows up here. Remember I said scripts were components? Yes. Well, you can see them here hanging on this object. R mesh renderer, that's a component. Rigid body, that's a component. Scripts are components, right? That's They all uh, are derived from the component class at some level. Uh, and that's why we're able to drag and drop a script onto an object. Now, if I run this, we should see, whee, off he goes. And can, oh, I forgot to control him. Whoa, 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 ah, all right. 
And he's controllable. Awesome. Let's do that again, just for fun. And I'm going to run this guy. And whoa. All right. And you can see he's affected by gravity. And he tumbles a little bit. So there we go. Let's, let's stop recording there. There's our, our setup. There's our script. And uh, what we'll keep doing is adding more stuff into the player script so it'll reload the level if the player falls off the board and stuff like that. So, okay, hope that was helpful in setting up um, the first little bit here of the Cubethon. If you have any uh, questions or you need any help, just ask. I'll be happy to help you out. Thank you.